All right, ready, recording. So welcome everybody, this is a design sprint where we do an epic, epic effort. And you see some smoke, smoke in the background here, that's, that's some aromatherapy back there. All right, um, epic effort, we're gonna do language agnostic instructionals today, which are an advanced form of communicating technical information, kind of like the IKEA style fabrication diagrams, basically, language agnostic meaning that there are no words we can have things like letters or symbols or numbers <clears throat> but no words because any language should be able to do be able to understand the final product and if you look into the working document um, in the working document you have a procedure <clears throat> lined up by Roberto a whole very nice video on how exactly do you do a language agnostic instructional <clears throat> idea here is that this this Friday the Saturday we're running a, another workshop on the build of the 3d printer we're generating these assets to facilitate the build and this will be of course usable by anyone else who wants to build either build the 3d printer or run workshops so really getting to a very advanced level of documentation so it's really moving forward starting from just basic you know the basic word-based instructions up to language agnostic instructionals as well as exploded part diagrams which we've actually done exploded part animation videos <clears throat> which we have done for the last workshop which were awesome now we're extending that to the language agnostic instructional so the way it works is uh, let's go into the working document here let me so let me share my screen As far as the working document goes, um, here's uh, the basic approach is to use the instructional that's been generated and the details are all in there. So we're assuming the way we approach the for today the instructional set, we assume that we have all the parts in front of us so there is no pre-cutting let's assume that's been done before the actual build starts so any any parts <clears throat> you know frame pieces or rod lengths they're all cut to size and uh, we're working with that and we use this Google presentation for edit editability as the final as the final work product as the final instructional the presentation is editable that's the point and don't worry about your artistic capacity because if you do the if you do the Google Doc, you can uh, edit that. I mean, people can edit that. So whoever comes after you, if you start the document and do your best, then we can have the layer of adding the graphics style later on in the process. So the critical part is that we extract the nice visuals from FreeCAD. And that's according to Roberto's procedure. The visuals are isometric views that are then cleaned up in, in Inkscape. Uh, right, that's Inkscape, if I'm correct, it's not GIMP. Um, as far as what we're doing today, the video playlist shows a lot of the procedures of what we have, and then uh, the specific breakdown for today is the workflow. Uh, and if you want to look at page two, you can see the actual geometry of the current machine. So left, right, back, forward. Uh, these di directions are defined by you facing the machine and looking at it. So the front is facing you, you're looking at the machine, looking towards the back of the machine. And then there's left and right, just like would be in real life. So that's the orientation. And the main things we want to do is there's the axis. So putting together one axis, then what we do is fit all the axes to the frame. And then after that, it's a final assembly order so those are the the first three you can say are the most critical um, most critical instructionals I'm gonna highlight that in green because the 3d printer consists of the universal axis a frame and then other components so we prepare all the components as teams um, the axis is of course the biggest part once we have that it's a lot of the thing is built 
then you fit the axis to the frame and orientation matters throughout because if the code's gonna work right if you don't want to be messing with the code everything has to be oriented in a particular way meaning things like which way the belt pegs the, the, the way the belt is attached the way the motors are facing those are the two main things um, is the motor on the left or right facing towards you or away from you <clears throat> and where is the belt attached to the carriage is that there's two holes one is a, a ribbed hole one is a smooth hole where the belt is attached also matters because that will make the axes go one way or the other if it's not attached the right way so final assembly order okay so one that's one two three but then to support the final assembly order we've got the extruder how do you build the extruder with uh, the sensor and everything there extruder plus sensor assembly plus the extruder holder there's cable chain so that's a big part um, and I think we can do the cable chain actually quite well we don't have to show the wires going through because it's kind of hard to get the wires uh, all throughout but there's a lot about attaching how do you attach the cable chain where where exactly it's uh, it's attached and how it's attached there's some details there there's the heat bed that's rather straightforward there's the power supply straightforward there's controller now the controller is um, the setup of it prior to the wiring that's what we can do that but as far as the controller wiring I think that's kinda maybe we don't we have a diagram for that that's that's actually quite complex without us having a full CAD for the ramps with sample connectors so the way I think the best way to do the control and it may, may not be today but some other day if you have a full CAD of all the ramps of the ramps the controller the Arduino with its shield it's got all the connectors we got <clears throat> what we have to do is cat up the connectors and show basically how each connector plugs in and we don't necessarily have to have the wire we know the wire is attached to a con given connector so as long as we have the connector with symbols for the wires that are attached to it we can avoid the complexity of actually showing all the wires and diagram and stuff we might we might do that some other time in the future once we maybe get to blender or something but for now uh, the controller would mean full CAD of the ramps controller plus full CAD of the individual plugs and then showing how they all go on in what orientation and where so that would be but we don't really have to get into that today so uh, to review the orientation just make sure you study this one so the axes are Y1 and Y2 that's the Y two Y axes the X axis is the main carriage where the extruder is and the Z is self-explanatory the motor is on the bottom of the Z the and the I'm gonna go please switch over to slide six because this will be important for most people uh, this is actually a picture I just took right now as it's printing but uh, if you look at the leftmost picture on slide number six here that's looking under the bed so you see the Z Z motor Z axis the Z motor is on the bottom and it's facing towards you uh, in a second picture that here you've got the the X axis the main carriage the extruder is towards the Z axis right so it's it's uh, facing the Z axis it's away from you when you're looking at it so this is this is the orientation when you're looking at it from the front and this is the official orientation you look at it from the front and then on the, the Y the left Y motor is facing towards the Z axis it's to facing towards the inside obviously because if it were facing the other way it would be hitting the frame and it's the printed pieces that attach to the frame and on the right hand side for the Y axis which is cut off here a little bit but you see that picture there the Y motor Y2 <clears throat> where Y2 is the right hand side Y axis once again the motors pointing towards the Z axis so there the, all the Y motors are pointing towards the inside the inner part of the machine and in a third picture here you see oh yeah it's more detail here that the Y Y motors are facing towards the inside towards the Z axis so that's the that's the main thing about orientation because we have to keep a very good track of orientation because uh, the assembly is we're gonna build the build the, all the axes but then once you have the axes built how you assemble it means 
the, the difference between assembling it one time and three times like we did last time. Like last time we pretty much ended up assembling things like three times over because people would have the belt the wrong way or the motor the wrong way. Even though the machine was right there, it's actually like when you're doing the whole build, it's actually quite quite challenging. And only one single person out of 12 got it right on the first time. So that shows that we have to adjust to the audience and the way we can address the idea of whether you, you you build it up correctly is when we work as a group, meaning that the team swarms on, okay, now we build the axes, you quality control the axes, and then when you assemble the axes into the frame, which is perhaps the most critical aspect of how the whole thing goes together, how you mount the axes within the frame, we can have that being done all at the same time, like everyone together. So you can basically a lot, you know, look at have all the machines down an aisle and you can see like right there okay are the motors facing the right way so we can quality control that right there as we're doing it not person by person it'll be a whole group because we found that when people are staggered and people are different steps it's literally impossible to quality control that because there's too many First, you have to see, okay, where is this, what step is this person on, and what do I need to look for? In practice, that's impossible if you've got a lot of people, especially as we scale to larger builds like 100 3D printers in a single day, like in Saudi Arabia in November that we're planning for. Uh, that's absolutely going to be critical that everyone's at the same step. Otherwise, quality control is impossible unless you have like 20 inspectors, you know, one for every five people or so then you can guarantee it, but otherwise you're going to make mistakes. So the idea of working all at the same time really matters. And especially if we have these language agnostic instructions, people can reference the, the, the build instructionals, and then everyone's just doing the same thing, so everyone uh, is aligned. And we'll really try to stick to that. I know we try to have everybody go at the same same step all the time. That just didn't happen in practice. So this time around, we're going to structure the event that we make sure that does happen. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual assembly, uh, various assemblies. The each page. So after starting on page three, we've got the different uh, one through eight. So uh, referencing between page one and and three, uh, the final assembly. So the final assembly order. Uh, I started that as the first first slide it's really slide number three step number three but it is uh, that's like one of the most important instructionals we could have because that shows the whole workflow but I'll move that into the third position so the first one is of course the axis and you can read through that so one is axis and right after that is the belt tensioning I actually put put that as a separate step because that's <clears throat> it's a little complicated, so I think that just deserves a separate instructional there. So in fact, I'm going to just add that axis and then belt tension. And then, so you've got belt tension point three. so therefore the final assembly order would be 4. And then axis and bed fitting to frame would be step number three. So you're fitting all the pieces that you made into the frame. That's like one one good step. So here we're organizing it around how the actual build happens. Whereas before with the exploded part animation videos, we had individual modules. Here we're talking about much more about the holistic picture of how it actually does go together. So, so that's three. Um, five would be extruder plus wiring. Uh, so yeah, there's a whole extruder assembly with the sensor, including the mounting piece, how you mount the extruder to the frame, which is magnetically attached. So there's all these details, uh, little details there. Um, so there's the extruder. What else we got? So cable chain. <clears throat> Let's see, extruder was... Number five. Um, so that's we have that up to here. As far as the cable chain, that's more complicated. We'll see if we have enough people for that. Heatbed plus support that comes out of the the 
exploded part animation videos that we can basically copy um, all the steps are in there so basically that's good to go I'm gonna put cable chain in red since since that plus the controller wiring are harder harder ones the power supply up to the green connector <clears throat> that's also not really shown and the controller not really shown here but we've got five let's see let's put these the ones that are available in what we have information for are one through six so how many people do we have today so we've got four people five people all together um, Josh just popped off but we can get started right on the first thing so um, in order to prioritize things what's most important for the build when we do the build the axis is we're gonna be working on that together and that's pretty much straightforward to make them but the final the axis fitting to frame <clears throat> actually should be the number one thing that we do simply because that's where things start getting confusing and people start making mistakes essentially of the axis fitting to frame so let's do that as number one let's do the final assembly order as step number number two in terms of prioritizing an extruder as three because once we have those like everything else is pretty much straightforward so let's divvy it up okay so we got two more people so let's divvy it up uh, starting with the uh, I think Roberto since he did the yeah Josh if you can't see the video it might be bandwidth issues on your side because um, wait am I was I not screen sharing if I was not it's recorded in this video I'm sorry if I wasn't and I might have forgot to press uh, I should be screen sharing right now uh, so here let's let's do it so axis fitting to frame I think that's a it's a pretty complicated one um, but it's the most important so we should do it and in this example we have to make the isometrics of the entire axis and for the final assembly order we have to have the isometrics of all the different pieces so there's a lot of work there actually so maybe um, extracting the, the the workflow and so we don't get overwhelmed here and, and see visible progress is what we should do is start a page with the actual extracted images well I mean it's a bunch of them so but I think we should we should um, break this down a little more so for example when you have the axis fitting to frame I mean for that you have to extract the X Y Y Z and the frame so you gotta get all those isometrics and uh, for the isometrics I'm not sure if it matters whether you're in perspective view or orthographic view but please do perspective if possible because that looks better uh, I'm gonna make that as a, as a note here use perspective view all the time otherwise the images look out of proportion so um, so for axis fitting to frame you need X Y Y Z and frame so we gotta extract those final assembly order you need you need everything so for that in addition to what we have already is the we still need the extruder cable chain controller power supply um, Access fitting to frame also includes the heated bed. That's about all the modules there are. Uh, but yeah, all of that has to be shown in. And when we do the access fitting to frame, that has the end stops attached. Okay, well, that's, there's a lot of work there. So we, let's just get right into it, divide one by one, and see how far we get in um, uh, one to three today. Or sorry, one to four, do it for three hours and see how far we get 
to the final final assemblies final yeah so let's um, let's divvy it up let's do it so who who wants to do I think Roberto since he's he wrote the book on this should probably do the maybe the final assembly order maybe uh, but for that we need to extract part by part so X Y Y Z frame heated bed plus all those elements so uh, one by one like final assembly order and the way you can start that is go into the video playlist there's a video there already on the final assembly order so just pretty much replicate that because because that that video by Jose there that's a good video on the final assembly order uh, and it's missing some of the things it's missing I think the cable chain and controller and power supply now if we don't have the cable chain controller and power supply uh, the cable chain I know we have it we might have to reconfigure it um, yeah yeah we do have the cable chain we don't really have the controller but what we could do there simply is do a very simple placeholder it's like a you know a two by three inch uh, rectangle cubic structure just like the power supply the power supply we actually did for the Lyman filament maker we can borrow it from there um, but um, you know you can represent it as simply <clears throat> a box so let's do it uh, final assembly order uh, okay Roberto can I get you started on that then you think you can do that one that's that's kinda like the biggest one um, yes I can okay so so let's get started according to the procedure <clears throat> and just to the, review the procedure the instructional has the full 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 procedure and what you're gonna end up at the end of the day is uh, is a uh, number of copied and pasted uh, images so let's do it like this when we have the uh, each slide here um, I think we can start working within this document right now to organize how everything is happening so that it's also very visible to everyone where everyone is so for example uh, who, like if you're doing the final assembly order just start um, start e inputting your images right into this just copy and paste uh, but there's a whole workflow before that you have to have the um, the file cleaned up so you first extract it so we, we want to make placeholders happen here maybe on each page so uh, each page should have placeholders uh, what are the things so you've got the ca working CAD file that you're working with you've got the S uh, Roberto is that the SVG file that we extract yes mm -hmm. Martin a question yes uh, could we could, can we try the Jitsi page for the meeting because your, your audio is terrible for most of us really hmm okay we can we can yes. try that so uh, but maybe okay yeah let's let's try it uh, if it's if it's terrible I uh, so if, yeah go to this link here open source ecology meet that that see and I have both of them open right now so let's see if people migrate over there you can actually open both of them if you have enough bandwidth like I'm over at Jitsi already okay so I see people coming in Abe Josh Roberto um, let's see um, is the sound any better on Jitsi yes okay <clears throat> okay that's interesting because it it's uh, I guess it depends on where people are located but that's good so I have both windows open and uh, Jose if you want to migrate over there yeah I guess you guys are all 
in here now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, let's continue with this. So let me share, continue sharing my screen. And... Uh, yeah. So Israel, if you want to join the Jitsi, which is in the chat. Oh, I, uh, I just tried on my phone. It seems to be working on my phone, but not on my computer for some reason. Okay. So... Yeah, well, um, you can do Jitsi on your, what, what you're using right now. Yeah, I don't see the video either. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so let's maybe continue on, on this. Uh, I'll keep the, the Google Hangout open as well. Um, yeah, so let's, let's do it. I've got both of them open, so it's it's interesting. And let's see, we gotta mute some people. Please mute yourself if you're in the background there. Okay, muted that person. Um, okay, so let's. Let's start it. So the, the big, one of the biggest parts in this exercise is where, how do we keep track of everything? So what I would suggest right here is after each individual slide, just start putting your, your images in there. So your SVG file that's been cleaned up, exported according to the procedure, but do link to your working CAD file in this document um, and to begin with, I think we should get clear on what the main working file is. So we probably want to go to D3D CAD page on the wiki and use the 16 inch final assembly. And that I believe, let's see, what is the, no, that's not the right page. So if you go to the D3D page, uh, the final, final assembly should be linked. So if you click on CAD, on the D3D CAD, final assembly link is the one that is, so it looks like, uh-huh. So we've got this working one here, and let's see the quality of it just to make sure that it's okay for our purposes, but the link, let me just paste in the link. Uh-oh, I'm crashing here. Um, let's see if this works. So that would be the file that I'm looking at. Uh, so please take a look at that. Uh, download it and see if that's the right one we want to do. So I'm going to open that up right now. I believe that's the that's the one we want to work work from. It should have the cable chain as well. Let's see what what the final version looks like here. Yeah. So we're going to be figuring out a lot of stuff here because we're just getting familiar with the language agnostic instructionals. So if we can get this process to work for everybody, that would be pretty magic. Um, uh, that link is coming out weird and... Uh, Ah, uh, it's getting messed up. Can you correct it? It's the okay. It's giving me a special character instead of the actual. If you go to D3D CAD, uh, that might be better. It inserted a smiley face because I had a D with a colon in that. Wait, what's going on there? No. Yeah, I don't know. 
yeah open up that file and see if it works for you okay that no it's still what's it doing there Yeah, whenever I try to paste it into Jitsi, it messes up the, the name, so uh, go to the D3D page and, and CAD page. There. Just hit it there. And as we go here, so let's divvy it up to divvy up the work to different people and maybe hmm since it's gonna take a little bit of time let's work on it collaboratively and since we only have till Saturday morning to do this what I would suge suggest <coughs> is that we maybe team up a little bit as much as we can <clears throat> Yeah, well, let's see, what's the best way to divide this? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, maybe just give one person. Yeah, let's, let's continue. Okay, so it's opening up there in FreeCAD. Freezing up here. Okay. Well, that final cat assembly there doesn't have number of details like the cable chain. And and first of all, I'm freeze my computer is starting to freeze here. Hmm.
Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I uh, see that file um, don't, doesn't have the bolts. Um, yeah, it doesn't. And um, let's see. Right. Um, that's that may not be the right file to use. We might have to go to the previous one. Um, go back to the previous one. Uh, download. Can you download the the previous version and see if that has everything we need there?
Hey, Markson, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Uh, so I think I may have missed uh, the assignment there. What What was the assignment you uh, gave me here? Okay. So the language agnostic instructional on the do you see the working doc so in the working are you in the working document I might have the wrong working document too I'm looking at a uh, I just um, development I, team August 15 no no go I just put it in the chat box So everybody's on the same page. That's the current working doc, both in Jitsi and Hangout. So take a look at that. Israel, you see it? You said you... you, you it's in the chat box. You said you put that on... In the chat box. Can you see it? Oh, wait. Is that wrong title on that? But that's the... What? What is this? Why is it titled? Why is the title Power Cube Design Sprint? Wrong title. Okay, let me make sure. Yeah, that's the right document. It's just. Uh, did I mess up the other working document? Let's see. But yeah, you see the document? Uh, no, wait, wait, where do you place it? In the chat box? It? Yeah, I just pasted it in the chat box. I don't see any links by you. Are you on Jitsi or, ch or chat? Both. Both. Yeah, I don't see anything. You don't on see Google it? Hangouts. I'm check Jitsi. Wait. Let's see. I don't see anybody on Jitsi. Yeah, okay, so probably connectivity issues, but Jitsi is, we're, we're all in there, and and you're just in the Hangout. But I, you're not seeing the group chat in the Hangout? I just pasted it again. Yeah, I don't see it in Google chat either. Okay, well, let me, let me email it to you. That's, okay, I think I just saw something. You do see me on Jitsi though? No, I see it in Hangout. Oh, you see me on. It's so weird. I don't, I don't see any links that you're pasting on, on Hangouts for some reason. So you got an email? Uh, from the email, all I saw was the... No, no, the I just sent you an email. One. Okay, I just sent you an email. And... I mean, that's, that's the only one I see. This is Israel, right? Israel, I'm talking to, to Israel, right? I sent it to the right person. Israel, are you still there? Uh, yeah, what'd you say? 
I'm saying um, I just sent it to you an email you didn't receive that Having like crazy connectivity issues? Or um, might be.